going on guys who is today here welcome to another episode of afrobeats weekly a podcast about african music on the continent and the diaspora we were mourning the fall off from the top three of one of our <laughs> favorite rappers so we couldn't be here last week last excuse uh, but we're better now we are healing uh, we're moving on uh, pray for us in these times of need uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've come to the commission about his decision, he has made it, and as things are playing out, mm. it might as well be, it might, it might, it might be the right decision to make, but eh, that's neither Afro beats nor day. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> how's everybody doing? Uh, how's your body going? Favorite Apple Pick duo is here. Um, what else? Charlie Poppy is dividing the internet once again. Uh, we'll get into that. <laughs> It's the Afro Beat Weekly Podcast. If this is your first time listening, welcome. Uh, this is the podcast on all things Afro Beats. Thank you for clicking. Thank you for checking us out. Um, before we get into today's episode, I need you guys to please, please rate and review this podcast and get with us. Helps us grow, helps us get noticed. Just give us that like. Uh, so as you're listening from your favorite app right now, please leave that five-star rating and comment. We appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. On today's episode of Afrobeats Weekly, we've got that Charlie Poppy, Shakes Poppy album on deck. I know a lot of you want to hear what we got to say. <laughs> we also got our Young Jones debut, Jiggy Forever. And as usual, new songs, part of the week, turn temperatures, eliminate, and all that other good stuff. What's good, my G? What's good? Pow, 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 pow. Yo, what's <laughs> good, my G? <laughs> okay, bro. Yo, how's your week, man? Not you so good? Chilling, 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 chilling. Chilling? It was a rough week, man. It was a rough week, you know, all across all across the internet, all across the group chats. It was a, yeah. it was a rough week for us. Man. I mean, it was rough in the sense that, it was, you know, like, we like when things are interesting and there's controversy and everybody can, like, chip in and give their points and everything. So, it was true. It was, it was a whole lot of entertainment. A whole lot of entertainment yeah. was, was yeah. popping this yeah. week. Yeah. So, like, shout out to this week. Afro beats way, so it was interesting. It was an interesting week. Yeah, man, it was it was pretty cool over this side. You know, Shaka had his concert. You know, we we were yeah, we were we were we were scared. We thought it was not going to happen, but it did happen. Um, same thing, internet. You know, people that were there, mixed reviews. Yeah. You know, from you know both sides. Some people really loved it. Some people thought it was you know. It was kind of weird. You know, some people really didn't rate it. You know, so it was like different reviews, man. Uh, but at least it did happen. Yep. You know, it didn't get it didn't get cancelled. But there were a whole lot of things, you know, going into it for the fact that, you know, you know, it didn't sell out like how people wanted it yeah. to be. Yeah. And now it makes sense because I was always like, ah, you know, like I said. You know, promoters, it wasn't on Ashaka, to be honest. It was like more on the promoters. And it's also not really on the promoters because of how much they had to pay to get Ashaka. Apparently. Yeah, I said it. I, I said it. No, I said the guy. I, I said it. I, I think that, that was the. I don't think they factored in how much Ashaka, you know, commands. I mean, they did factor it in. That's why, like, so apparently it's about 300K. So if it's about 300K, that's 300k then you have to pay for the venue then you have to pay for like security and everything then you probably have to pay for like promotion and all that so that's a whole lot of that bag is already is already big mm. then you don't have to now think about okay we're gonna how we're gonna make our money back and then how we gonna you know get some profit from this so all that to say like that's the only venue they had they could choose um and of course, you know, they tried their best. It was good. It was a good turnaround. Like, it was a, it was a, yeah, yeah. Because I saw, um, the way I saw it, are, are you done? Are you done? <laughs> no, no, you, you, can, yeah. you can jump to it. Okay, no, <laughs> I, 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 the way I saw it, it was, at first, everybody was scared. Like, all the, like, when I woke up and I started reading, like, um, tweets from different people, I like, followed that and kind of and stuff. I was saying, oh, this place is empty. Oh, this place is so empty. What's going to happen? Like, Shakir is not out yet. And I think in the blink of an eye, next day everybody was like, oh, this place is full, this place is packed. So everybody's here. So I think they reduced maybe the tickets over time. Maybe people like heard and people started trooping in. 
And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. I know people. I know people that bought the ticket the day of, like oh, just yeah, because. Yeah. yeah, just because the prices kept dropping, and so th- and that's a good thing. Like, uh, you rather make some money yeah. than no money at all. Money. So, yeah. so that was a good thing. thing. The I saw was the show was short. I think it was like a one hour. Yeah, it was just one hour and, a, and change and some change. Like so, like one hour, like maybe like five minutes or ten minutes max. Given the fact that they waited that long, because everybody got in like maybe eight o'clock, yeah. um, there was no opening act. That's another story. Apparently, there was supposed to be an opening act. I don't know if you know. You, we, I think we reviewed her music here. Her name is Tomei. Um, so yeah, she was supposed to be the opening act, and then she was she she was no longer the opening act because she didn't perform, and there was something on her IG that she's going to tell the story of why she didn't perform. So there was that. And then, you know, pretty much, I don't think that, like, the DJ was playing that great. And then, like, two hours of just waiting, then Ashake comes and performs, and then he performs for just, like, an hour or some change. So people felt some kind of way. Other people loved it because it just felt, you know, because Ashake is, like, back-to-back heats. Yeah. You know, yeah. just bangers and bangers and bangers and bangers. So, so but people I mean, loved there's, it. There's always so much you can sing and perform in, in like in a show in a show like that that is not like oh yeah, like an ashake set list where you can change go back somebody will come in some another person will come in will have like TV. exactly so that was another thing people like he never changed he was just on stage the whole time yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so much you can do right. <laughs> so, and again i think the only thing i saw online was the whole selling out and not selling out thing but that was mostly from like all these tank camps Trying to say, oh, Bernard did this first. So nah. So, uh, like, you know, right. the, the fear that we had, uh, you know, they always go to turn it and say, oh, we didn't sell out. But, but the show was a success in terms of, like, yeah. Product like, product sure, product. people coming through. I'm yeah. sure people, like, you know. So now it's not up to the. Now it now turns into the. You know how well was his stage performance and all that that's another that's another discussion yeah, but yeah. yeah that was like mixed reviews from even this morning as i was checking i saw a lot of mixed reviews about his performance yeah that's that's another thing so yeah, you know you'll probably get better like i said gotta do more and more of these shows you know get get feedback and then you can you know you can blow so yeah. Well, well, I always say that. Big ups, man. Big ups, Afrobeat. It's good to know that Shakir is still, you know, performing. The people are still loving him. Still a fan here. We are still fans here. So, yeah. It's the money with the That's our Shakir internet from the internet review. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to fan mail uh, this week we have three for the price of one we'll just you know get through let me allow show with the first one hey yo man so let me go through the first one all right so hello guys i trust this email finds you well firstly i want to express my appreciation for the exceptional content you consistently deliver on your podcast. Yes. 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 Your dedication to highlighting African music, particularly from Nigeria, is commendable and serves as a beacon for Afrobeat enthusiasts worldwide. Ah, ah. Yo, I, know, I, remember, you know, I know all these kind of emails that you know they will first big you up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like the first big you up. You know, so, and they're not giving the. <laughs> However, <laughs> however i must address a glaring omission that has left me perplexed and frankly disappointed in a recent episode you have meticulously reviewed albums from various artists within the afrobeats genre including adekunle's tyler ykb yusuf to name a few yet the absence to any mention let alone a review of Timmy Dacolo's latest album is disheartening. Mm. Timmy Dacolo's album stands as a pinnacle of musical excellence, mm. embodying the essence of authentic Afrobeat sound while seamlessly blending soulful melodies and pungent lyrics. Dope man. It's a testament to his artistry and the rich tapestry of nigerian music therefore the oversight is not in not featuring his work on your platform is both perplexing and unjustifiable oh my god what did we do 
I understand that each episode requires careful creation, but to regard an album of such caliber is a disservice to your audience and the artist himself. Even esteemed personalities like Tunde, wow, Tunde, call out, man, were unable to offer a plausible explanation for this oversight hinting at the possible bias. Wow. Moreover, while the recent episode featuring Beyonce was undoubtedly insightful, it's perplexing. Man, we're perplexed about this, man. To see a deviation from the core focus of promoting authentic Afrobeats content. As a dedicated listener and supporter of your podcast, I felt compelled to voice my concerns. Timmy Dekolo's album deserves the same level of attention and recognition afforded to other artists within the Afrobeat sphere. I urge you to reconsider and rectify this omission by featuring a comprehensive review of his album in an upcoming episode. Thank you for considering my feedback, and I look forward to witnessing the continued growth and excellence of your podcast. Warm regards to your entire team. Tokini George. <laughs> Hello to you, my brother. <laughs> uh, what to me? You, you, you wouldn't need it. You need the breather after reading that long. <laughs> Yo, man, I'm perplexed, by you. You're not jumping real quick. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you very much, first of all, for, for you know, taking time out to write to us. Um, oh, my, I, I don't know. I, just, I listened to the album. It's a good album. I mean, I don't know if, you know, versatile is the word I want to use for the album, but the album is good. I, I like different styles. Uh, I didn't, I mean, I didn't do that to pull off all those styles. I heard those high life songs that, I mean, I heard it. I, I, I played everything in man for a while or two. It was everywhere, so I played it. That was my song for a while. Uh, but truth be told, I didn't go back to the album because I'm not um, heavy into see me that close music aside i mean everybody recognizes him for the you know talent that he is but I, 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 i'm not just heavy into his music like that but currently that was solid that was a very solid album uh, to be honest I, I don't know how we do review it <laughs> i don't know how we do review but no vex um, thank you for <laughs> writing us solid album this is our review this is my review i don't know if you should listen to it but this is my review that was very so, album. Solid album. <laughs> so i think it was i, I want to believe it's one of the weekends where we didn't have a pod because i think it came out in january okay. um i think like maybe it's fine last week in january so i don't think okay. we had a pod that weekend um but um yeah like i listened to the album kind of go kind of go with what you said I skimmed through it once. I didn't go back to it. And like, I couldn't even put one of the songs on any of my playlists. Like, there was only like one song I was like, oh, let me stick, you know, let me steal this song. I feel like it's just an album. The songs just fit only on the album. Yeah. And that's a good thing. Like, it's, it's an easy listening if you want to just listen to that vibe all through. Um, however, for me and my household, like, it's not, <laughs> it's not something I would be, you know, jumping back to. But I still think it's a good album. Yeah, it is. It's if, that's, if that's your cup of tea, I still think it's a good album. Yeah. yeah. And like my standard track, like I can say my what my standard track is. Um, yeah, I want me. Um, everything, which is Amen. Um, I like Men of the South and Happy Fellows. So those are those are the songs that I liked. So yeah. So there you have it, Kimi. That's a review. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope it's okay. I hope it's okay, but you know. I, I hope you are less perplexed now. Ah, oh, I hope, man. I hope, but uh, you know, shout out, shout out, Tokini. Yeah, you know, shout out to we, you, man. Thank you for listening. All right, let's move on to um, Basu here. Uh, big shout out to you guys for always making Mondays start with a bit of fun. I just finished listening to the latest episode, and there's a bit of discussion on why Kiss Daniel isn't as rated as he should be. While I can't speak for everybody, here are my two cents. There was a time when most people felt that there was something missing before he could be spoken of in terms of the big three slash big four. Maybe with a bit of luck slash management, he was going to get there, but he dropped Buga and it almost felt like he found a hit formula and stuck with it and decided not to improve again. Mm -hmm. I don't think he has had a good song after Buga dropped. Yes, he had. A, yes, he has had massive hits. But if you tell me he has, he has had good songs. I'll have to take your word for it. On some level, I think he knows. I think he knows. But these criticisms get to him, and that's why he said the things he said on my G. 
I just can't reconcile the same artist that sang Good Time and Rabba with this one that is singing Shuperu and Twe Twe Twe. So over to you for that one. Like I said, man, I feel sometimes certain artists need to be guided. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing if an artist needs to be guided. Right? Yeah. Executive producers and ARs and all those things are important for an artist no matter what at no matter no matter at no matter and i keep trying to say no matter what but <laughs> at no point at no stage in time are they no important and that's what and that's what stops some certain artists from having classic material i mm. mean point we can go back into the time i feel like someone like as talented as chris brown doesn't have a classic album he has good albums but he doesn't have a classic Fly. album Fly. what I beg to differ, but continue. He doesn't have a classic album. There's no album that Chris Brown st that stands the test of time like Usher that has Confessions or it, it's 701. There's none. We, we can't have that. Uh, that argument is you can't have that argument. There's nothing like that. Just dead it. And that's because and that's because direction is needed from a like a veteran, you know, producer from a veteran ear or something like that. Which helps guide you and say, oh, look, this song, no, nah, I don't, this song shouldn't make the album. That song shouldn't make the album. There's certain things like that. And it helps. So, you know, people like one day who we know is madly talented has not had, you know, the same thing after leaving movies. And that is also true because we can also say, look, the veteran year is gone. You don't have the power to do this thing alone. Yeah. And it's okay. So, you know, I think that, you know, Kiz Daniel will come to a point or maybe he would, you know, drop with a producer that would say, hey, look, let me guide you on this thing. Let me, you know, let's produce this thing together. And with that, he might come out with a monster album. I pray and I hope so. That's my, that's my I, don't, I, I think, let me just, let me just add my own. It's not, my, my own is not even really that deep. I just think maybe he's actually comfortable where he is. You know, like dropping hits, making money, being introverted, and uh, maybe that's who he is, and he can't really like snap out of it because to crack the like top three or top four in Nigeria, you have to have, in addition to the hits, you have to have your fair share of constantly being in the news, in people's faces, the controversy here and there. So I feel like that's what is missing in terms of you know that popularity that you know skyrockets him to that top three top four thing so i just think that's what is missing I, I, that's just my own simple you know explanation you think what is missing again please like just him just being out there like small controversy here no he no i think i think he has the hits no. see the reason look the reason why ashake is filling up um scotia bank arena is because he has two albums that we one is considered a classic yeah, it's not because I, it's not because he has controversy i i, I get I think, I think <laughs> he has, <laughs> has hits in two albums but yes he's daniel's material however from whenever he, he started to now he still has the same kind of like the same amount of hits you get what i'm saying like yeah, it's not it's, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't tally one day has more hits he can't fill up the, the arena i'm telling you that out like classic <laughs> material <laughs> classic <laughs> material <laughs> helps as wrong with him too, it's almost wrong with one day in terms of i don't want to use lazy but being out there like doing something to you know be in people's faces those are what gets you into the, into conversations like so the hits are there already like for all these guys but to have that okay this boy na uh, in be top three or in be top four there has to be like every year like year, like there are no breaks every year you are doing something every year listen album every year they are talking about you every year you you've done something so that's just my yes. that's, that's my take every year and a classic album Every year in classic material. If you can't do that. <laughs> Every year in classic material. Like you have to have classic material to to be to enter into that top that echelon. You have to have classic material. You have to have that album that everybody's talking about one year. Like one year everybody's talking about that album. 
because the album has multiple hits. Yeah. Not that you came out one year and you gave us two hits and you went away. No, give us a project, multiple hits. Everybody's going to talk about you that whole year. The next year, maybe you did something, you dropped another album. Maybe it's not as good as the classic album, but it has another body of work, another set of hits. That's it. That's all you need. Well, I guess time will tell who's going to. There's no unanimous four or five now, so There's three. There's big three. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's big three. And uh, although one of the big three I said is the only one there, you know, we have gone the Kendrick route, but there's still. <laughs> there's only one big B. <laughs> yeah, there's still one big three. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bossy wrote us twice, so let me allow you to read that one. <laughs> Okay, so last one. Um, so also here again. I'm curious if you guys can do an episode that speaks on how sampling works. Here's the thing. I used to think Lost Ones by Lauren Hill was the original was the original of the pop the popular song, but it turns out the original was Sister Nancy's Bam Bam. My question now is if someone samples the Lauren Hill song or Logic's Bobby a hose bam, are you sampling just the song? Or since they're indirectly sampling Sister Nancy ones too, you have to be on the hook for that one as well. I think there are other aspects to this as well as, but yeah, it would be nice to hear you guys speak on it. In more recent times, if today I sample Burner's Last Last, am I also sampling the Tony Braxton song? Okay, this one is, I want to say easy, Sha, but there's a perfect example I can use. So without yeah. getting too deep into, like, the technicalities of, like, sampling and all those, um, uh, just in reality and all those things, let me use a recent example floating on the internet. Uh, yeah. Metro Booming and The Weeknd have a song called Creeping, where they use the drums um, owned by Eric Simon on your yeah, customer. Uh, these drums were used by Marijuana on I Don't Want to Know. That's that to I don't know that 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 those uh, that drum pattern. So the yep. same marijuana used a song also sampled by Enya. So that's that. Mm, yep. So, uh, so Metro Boomin is paying and also crediting Eric Simon for using his drums, which on that marijuana song. And according to Eric Simon, he owns four percent of the publishing on that Metro Boomin song. So marijuana is also own a part of the publishing on. The Metro Booming song. So that's how sampling works. So today, if you are sampling last last, you are sampling it wasn't man enough by Tony Braxton. So it's just it's almost just as simple, but there's just a certain percentage that you know, I think on the amount of length you sample or what you sample, like you, everybody can come up with their own negotiations. So, but to sum it up, if you are sampling last last, you are sampling it wasn't man enough by Tony Braxton. I don't know, I think. Tony Braxton doesn't own publishing on that song, so you will be paying to what's his name? I think Dark Child or whoever it is that produced it. Because Tony Braxton wasn't listed as songwriter or royal. Or, I don't know. I don't know how that works, but the summary is that you'll be sampling the Wasn't Man Enough by Tony Braxton. We are sampling last last. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and also depends. It also depends on what you're sampling on last last. Because if yeah. literally, if you just went and sampled last last, you're not paying anybody. You're only paying right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. But as long as you sample the melody or anything that's within the Bad Enough song, you'd pay both Burner and whoever owns Tony's publishing yeah. on that yeah, song. That's so. how sampling works. So you pay whoever owns the publishing of the song you are sampling. Exactly. Okay. Anyways, thank you guys for writing us. Um, <laughs> I feel like there's a fun new episode and people are like, you guys should just get into the Shali Poppy Shali review, but we'll get into that. Yo! <laughs> uh, news making the rounds. Um, nothing to. Nothing to you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was just Ruga firing shots. Uh, let's start with Ruga firing shots at Jones in World. You know, he woke up on Thursday and decided to tell us why he left Jones in World. According to him, um, they got so comfortable with, uh, with with the money and they were with the money they were making from him and couldn't push him as big as he wanted to be pushed. I think the show has said this before. Um, he also said they were using the money they made off him to push new artists without his knowledge and they weren't being transparent with him when it came to when it comes to finances. So um, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, we've we've always said that, man. That's yeah. it, it would all it would it would come down to you know, I wanted to be a bigger star. I'm making this amount of money and 
we're not doing anything with it so on both sides i can see i can see the argument on both sides both sides i want to run a label i want a bigger bigger label i want to have more acts yeah right and it just so happens that the money coming in is from only one act right now yeah but it's Rema. but exactly um i mean Rema is kind of Rema is like a deal with maven so yeah, like yeah, yeah, exactly okay. It's yeah, split yeah. in between. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you guys just put Jones in. And you just feel like, look, I'm trying to build this big label. I'm trying to build. I need more stars. So, like, if they had, like, you know, they're giving them more time, you know, and they had more acts, you know, probably, you know, Ruga would now start seeing, like, the fruit of all labor and all that. Yeah. But, hey, it is what it is. Like, you can't wait because you don't know how long this thing is going to last. Yeah. So... Ruga is valid, you know, to jump ship. And, you know, Jones is valid to say, you know what? Yeah, whatever, man. We tried. There's, there's nothing wrong with jumping ship. But I just thought it was like a publicity stunt. They released a song that day. You came out to say, um, your label is doing this, doing that. I mean, it's, it's good to speak up. Like, if you if your label is cheating and you feel like not you, it's, it's always good to speak up. Or the way this industry works sometimes, it, I, I don't want to say it's going, people people always regret speaking up in that manner but if you think that's what, how you need to go so that they can settle you and do all and do right by you then by all means but i don't know publicity stunt for me it's, it's still valid it's <laughs> 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 still valid but yeah <laughs> for the upcoming but anyways let's move on to we terms oxlade making spotify's 100 greatest R and B songs of the streaming era. Um, mm. Spotify released the list of the top ten, top hundred greatest R and B songs of the streaming era based on quality, impact, replay value, influence, and cultural significance. Whiskey, Whiskey's Essence featuring Thames ranks as the highest African songs on the list. We at number twenty one. Um, Thames Free Mind was placed at number twenty nine. Whiskey recorded a second entry on the list with Chris Brown's Call Me Every Day, which is which was at number 71. Oxley's viral hit Closer was at number 88. Other Africans on the list include Tyler's Water at number 60. And Cameroon, Cameroonian American singer Libyanka also made the list with a hit single, People Coming In at number 99. I think valid list, I guess. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, you know, noticing that these are ranked under R and B. True, I know Afrobeats. I, look, they give it R and B, as you can see. So you do not need to. Yeah. Oh, call me the Afrobeat or the rest. I'm not. A- Hey man, just make your music, and they will rank you wherever they want to rank you. I know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even close it. Like, <laughs> close it. I just, it, that's how you know this song that R and B in my ears. It didn't even cloak at all. That, oh, it's some of the Afrobeat songs that as people call them good R and B songs. Yo, yeah, man, that's what it is, man. Just make your songs and leave my Afrobeat alone, man. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. We, we can't, we can't, we can't change the topic. I mean, we can't change the title of our podcast. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Anyways, uh, but there you have it. Let's move on to the main topic. Let's get on board the Plutomania spaceship. Um Charlie Poppy has dropped. And surprise, surprise, everyone is divided. On one side, we have those who say this album is bad. And on the other side, we have those who say, what were you expecting from a Charlie Poppy album? I say uh, two things can be true. Um, Shakespeare P by Charlie Poppy. I think nine songs, only one feature. Only one song has like feature from his guys. Production mainly handled by his go-to guy, producer X. There's also Larry Lane's P2J. The album didn't really cut it for me, even by my Charlie Poppy ears. <laughs> He's rapping more on this one, and the rapping is terrible. I think the mixing sounds very off for some reason. Is it a bad album? Yes. Does it have a couple of good songs? Also, yes. Um, I, and I think this is kind of like a style now. Um, even from the album cover to the title, Shakespeare Poppy. 
you know, he's trolling us and it works for him. Um, you know, again, two or three songs will be added to his catalog of hits and I think he's fine with that. Uh, for me, I love the first song. That's my favorite song by far. I like High Tension. I like New Cards. Uh, I went in with my Charlie Poppy ears, so I wasn't really disappointed like that. It's a fast food album. You know, Here Today, Gone Tomorrow. Um, and I'd say so far so good, but I think his fans aren't tired of him yet. So, um, I, think, I think it works for him. The trolling works for him. And... The formula of raising an album, having two hits, it's it's their thing now. So let's see how long that will last. Yeah, so that's that's my thoughts. <laughs> Am I think okay. that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so pretty simple. Um, yeah, we all already know where I stand with Charlie Poppy. I don't think Charlie Poppy is a rapper, you know. Or, or maybe not, I don't think that he's a rapper. Whatever kind of rap he's doing is not good rap. <laughs> <laughs> he was rapping on this one. Yeah, he was actually rapping on this yeah. one. Most bars not rhyming, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, <laughs> but with that being said, you like you've actually called it the only three good songs. Like songs that you feel it's not like I would say good songs, but I just feel like these are the three songs that will make it yes. to you know our era of. Playing it in the clubs, yeah. seeing it online, seeing it on memes, seeing it on like reels and all that kind of thing. So you're not gonna escape these three songs. At least one of these three is gonna pop out, and that's yeah. ASAP, um, High Tension, and Billion. Yeah. One of those three is gonna make it out. So don't worry if you hate this album. I'm sorry, <laughs> you're gonna hear one of these songs. So with that being said, that's pretty much it. I don't, I don't. It's not my cup of tea, but it is what it is. You can't escape. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't escape Shake Poppy. Yeah, you can't escape Shake Poppy. However, I think that the promo for dropping this EP is the baddest promo. I loved it. I don't know who I say. Yeah, the baddest I, promo. I loved it too. It has the <laughs> baddest promo. You can't even tell from the what, what was saying in terms of who. Oh, you know, and all the, you know, like, he has like some funny, funny one liners. And I think that's why he yeah. name like, I, I loved it. I loved like, it. Oh, Shakespeare, don't do past this one. No. And he just, you know, he was like, you know what? Let me play on this whole um, Shakespeare. And it's, I, I mean, the boy just having fun. <laughs> so that, no. I, I, I really don't care for the album. This one in particular. Uh, but yeah, like you said. One or two songs will come out, we'll, we'll bump to it, move on to the next one. He comes out again, does the same thing. And I think for now, it works for him. And people aren't tired yet. Um, so, yeah, that's it. That's it with Charlie Poppy. And, uh, um, but in terms of what people were saying, that uh, should you expect Charlie Poppy to you know, give you a good album based on him saying, no, he doesn't write music, he doesn't do this one. What do you think about that? Some people are like, they don't, that, that, that's not how an artist is supposed to be judged. Come out and give us your best material. Or don't, don't come out at all. This, I mean, this is all he got. If this is all he got, this is all he got. <laughs> you can't see it. You can't see it. You this is all. What I want you are. You, you literally cannot do <laughs> past your power. Like this is the, this is this is how he knows how to make music. You know, he's not the one to go sit down with like veteran producers yeah. and like let's construct something that would you know elevate my people. Nah, 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 nah. That's not Shakespeare, man. <laughs> yeah, I, so I, um, this thing on my conspiracy theory on this is his brother will be the one to give us the rap bars that we want, or at least tell him. Tell, and yeah, people yeah. are not going, and you guys are not going to love that his brother's yeah, music. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm pissed off with you. Then he uh, just comes, gives us the because you vibes. Know, have a label under this thing now, so he's trying to, you know, see how they can scale his label. But yeah, that's it. That's our take on um, Shakespeare, Poppy, Charlie Poppy. Go in with your Charlie Poppy ears, and I you won't really be disappointed. <laughs> you won't, man. You won't. You won't be disappointed. I, I think Shaw has learned his lesson now. He's not really complaining. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He's not really complaining for that first hour. Mm-hmm. You can see that he has, he has adjusted. You know that this is what this guy can do. Now we complain again. Anyways, um, two albums came out. One 
from veteran producer Young John Jiggy Forever. Mm. I think the most surprising, the most surprising thing about this album for me was when I was checking the credits and I didn't see his name on any of the producer slots. So I don't know if he co-produced or it was an omission, I, but I don't think he produced any song here. I, I, I was, I yo. I was, <sighs> and I was like, I, I didn't see any produced by Young John. Um, 16 track albums, you know, features from Don Jazzy, Zlatan, Ya Levis, um, Sean Paul, Blackbone, Shea Evers, and Kiss Daniel. Like I said, this is a stellar production lineup. J Tunes, Epiano, T Mode, Magic Sticks, Young Release, Blaze Beats, Tales, Primes, Rage. This is an all star Ama Piano Afro Beats as Avengers Assemble type of <laughs> production. Um, the album is good vibes. Um, but to me, I feel like it would have worked better like two or three years ago at the peak of that log drum sound. It still works now. It just doesn't hit as hard for me because, you know, this sound don't tire me. But a couple of games, <laughs> especially with the features, I like the features, all of them came through, even the Don Jazzy feature. Uh, it's a decent album for me. I like it. I'll, you know, go back to it, pick a couple of favorites of mine. But for now, I think the songs that stood out were the songs i've heard before minus the i think minus the one with yeah Le, uh, yeah for it's a decent album decent album decent album I, I don't i don't know what you think um no clearly because if you listen to this album the same day that you listen to charlie poppy you'd be like oh my god this album is amazing because <laughs> that's what i said like the first time i heard it like i know just i just listened to shakes poppy yeah. so i listened to it. i was like oh my god this, my, this album is mind-blowing and that's just that's just because <laughs> I just listen to I just listen to Charlie Poppy. So, anyways, but but when you come down and you know come back down to earth, it, you realize exactly what you said. Um, this album's coming out April 20, 2024. I think if this album came out in September twenty twenty three, yeah. I would it would have stayed on the amazing plane. Like I feel like it just came out like eight months late. Um, but it's still a good album. Like yeah, yeah. so, this this is what we're saying. Good body of work. Um, Young John did not disappoint. Stellar production all through. Features came through. You know, Kiss Daniel is on this album. You know, and it's a really good song. <laughs> it's a really good song. So like, I can't really count like where you know I can say oh there was a bad song. He had features with Sean Paul, which is a really good song. For my tank with Don Jazzy, Fifty Billion is Latin. I love that song. Um, Shapali, which I was like, oh, is Charlie Poppy on this? Yeah. Uh, but Shapali, <laughs> Shapali was a really good song as well. You know, starts off with Tony Montana. You know, I, you know, give what you take. I think this is a, I think this is a better Sha- Tony Montana song. Tony <laughs> Montana. <laughs> I think it's a better Tony Montana song. But yeah, like all through, I can't really complain about anything. I just think timing was. You know, timing, timing kind of affects that one. But if you know, if we don't have anything for the summer, you know, I think this album will produce a bunch of hits that you know people are gonna play a lot. So yeah, that'd be it. Not a bad album at all, man. So those are the two albums that came out. I, I'm, I'm praying and hoping this will open the floodgates for you know more R&B acts. I think next week is the Ruga and Buju R&B collaboration project, which. But not matter at all. So, uh, oh, just a random thing. Like, there's another album that we kind of missed. Also, it was because on you know weekend that we took took time off. You yeah. see, sometimes we just miss some things. Like, I'm sure there's another listener that like, oh my god, I can't believe they didn't talk about this album. But Fumbi, we all know who Fumbi is. Yeah, released an EP which is flawless. Seven tracks, top to bottom. Fumbi does no wrong. Absolutely amazing project. You need to listen to it. It's called Love Lust by Fumbi. Yo, that's it. That's all, that's all I got. Love Lust by Fumbi. You guys should check it out. I got. Really the album is good, though. The album is stellar. The album is fantastic. It's mad. The project is mad. The project is mad. Everything is mad. So, listen to it. Love Lost by Fumbi. I so, yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of next week, Poe and Roga, um, the release that last song, the song is, uh, the name is Poe by Roga and Buju. Um, it's produced by Blaze Beats. I feel like this is one of those songs that even sound better when they drop it on that joint EP next week. Um, I like it. Yep. No complaints. No complaints for me. Same thing, same thing. 
I I feel like it, it will it will sound better on the EP. I th- it will sound more much better on the EP. Yeah. Right now, it's pretty pretty decent song. So yeah, shout out. All right, let's also go to Ekelebi by Stoneboy featuring Odumodu. Uh, this is the Ghana and Niger collab. Uh, this is exactly how I picture the Stoneboy and Odumodu song. Sounds like a grimy Jamo dance or you know, sprinkled with rap music. Uh, I, I like this one too. It's another song like I, I went back to when I was listening. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I well, I would say that I, I liked it. I won't say that I liked it, but I, th- I think it, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. You can't expect anything more than what you know what they're giving you on this. So just go in the same thing, you know, fresh ears. You might like it, you might love it. And uh, to me, it might just be meh. So alright, alright, let's go on to hmm. Mm, by Chris Brown and <laughs> the title is so funny. <laughs> That's <laughs> your yeah, you know, by Chris Brown and David Doe. This one is off Chris Brown's 11 11 Deluxe. And if I'm not mistaken, this is like their sixth or seventh collab. Look, Chris Brown, um, I'd have said come and collect green passports, but even me, I want to read my own green passports. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come collect NIN or BVN or something. Let's give you an honorary name, you know. Let's. <laughs> It's about time because I, I don't, you are Afro beats. You are now you are one and the same. <laughs> yo, <clears throat> yo, yo. First of all, like it's on his deluxe album, which is thirty-five songs. Bro. Chris Brown's gas. This is what I'm talking about. Like you need to have someone to say, "Yo, this thing is this thing you are doing." I think for, I think for Chris Brown, we've lost that battle a long time ago. I think the last Chris Brown song that had twelve. I had if I had 15 songs, I can't remember the last Christmas song that I Yo, like yo, Breezy, I love you and all that, but 35 songs? That's 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 two weeks, man. It's gonna take me two weeks to listen to this thing. Um and oh, come on. Anyways, it's on track eight. So that's that's the thing. Like if you can get to like ten songs, this song is track eight. And of course, I feel like Lo J wrote this roots chris brown's verse i don't know I it just sounds good. like a low j verse I, I won't be you know i won't take it out away yeah. from but yes anyways it's a dope Afrobeat beat song you know video is gonna come out you know everybody's gonna love it you know so shout out shout out breezy shout out breezy. Our, our, our number one afro beat international let's move on to Tire by the Band, Zlatan Timaya, Specific King mm-hmm. King, Bad Boy OML, and Kiss Switch. I heard this song mm-hmm. and I was like, all of it came together. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't it, Chiefs. This ain't it. <laughs> I, think, I think it's a the band celebration type of 20 years on stage or something like that. But, man. Yeah, which, I mean, he did have the show um, last weekend, or yeah. this weekend. Was it this weekend on Friday? I think. Um, so, I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know. Shout out the bench. That's it, man. Shout out the bench. Legend. Shout out. Shout out the bench. Again, I think I the same thing. Shout out the bench. Legend. <laughs> Let's move on to another day by Lona. I love this one. I love what Lona is doing. Um, especially with his visuals. He's doing everything right. Dope songwriting when it comes to this another day song. Dope songwriting, dope delivery. Totally like the guy. I haven't really heard any misses from him. And he's just building his car. He's just building his car love gradually. Uh, I love the song. Another day by Rona. Yo, beautiful song. I, I even love the single album art or single art. Um just just that alone caught me. So shout out to Lona. Beautiful song. I think, you know, the production was Production with Stella, his his voice and his his rhythm went in. So yeah, shout to Lona. Where are you from? Is he Abuja Cats? I, I, no, I think it's Lagos. I think it's a Lagos car. I'm not really okay. sure. Like I, I, I right. think so. I think so. But I'll, I'll, we'll, check, we'll check and get back to you guys. Um, no worries by Mologo is the last song we we'll listen to. Uh, um, Mologo. Yeah, I like this one too. The drums, as in the the sound, especially. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I say the drums, but it had, this, it had, it had like a certain different sound to it. We just like, you know, grab them and listen to it a second time. 
Um, so I like it. Uh, Mologo by uh, No Worries by Mologo, another dope songwriter. Uh, it starts off with like the let me say the drums, but like yeah. uh, high life. Yeah, exactly. You know, like this with a talking yeah. drum, yeah. like a little talking drum, and then of course Mologo does what Mologo does. Vocalist is really good, but this one he was kind of like humming through, you know, for most of the parts. But yeah, it's a really good song. Yeah, really good song. Let's move on to the next segment. So let us get into um, Eliminate this week. And it is a Fields versus Young John Eliminate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> songs they sang or songs they were on and sang, not songs they produced. I think that was like the only way I could do this without you know, all the calamity. <laughs> <laughs> we have... Uh, finesse featuring Buju and Stamina with Aya Star and Ira doing battle. Feels stamina, stamina. Nah, it has to be finesse, man. There's nothing. Ah, finesse. Says it has. To, it has to be finesse or nothing. Um, doing battle again. Yolo, Yolo by Feels and my Aquafina by Young John. What say you? My Aquafina. What is life, man? H two O. Right, move on. Is what I like. Uh, <laughs> let's also move on to another round. I have this is a David O feature with electricity vibes <laughs> with frequency that fails. And then when they me da 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 so when we electricity with that one um let us move on to stand by you and it's already that it's already when i move when i will finish it no one is going to right, without finishing Uloma goes through all right, now we have finesse with Buju and electricity doing battle. Ah, finesse. Right, right. We also have two young John songs doing battle in Uloma and Aquafina. Hi. One is about water. One is about an, an evil girl. Yes. <laughs> water, evil girl. <laughs> evil girl water <laughs> what are evil girl what is life you know what let the evil girl move through right. shout out to my evil girls <laughs> shout out to them moving back to the final round we have finesse featuring buju and young just extra cool doing battle what say you finesse baby finesse it's only finesse. It can only be finesse. Mix it. That is the ultimate eliminate song on this week's Fields versus Young John. And with that, we've come to the end of another great episode. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of Afrobeats Weekly. We hope you enjoyed it. New episode of the podcast drops every Monday. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, wherever you get your coding from. We would love to hear from you. Use the hashtag Afrobeats Weekly. Please leave us comments, suggestions, send you music. Tell us if you read your music or not on fan mail at Afrobeats <laughs> at Afrobeatspod.com. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram on Afrobeatspod. We'll catch you in the next episode. Peace out, people. Peace out. Peace. Don't apologize. <laughs> <laughs>